All right, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the management assertions, the actual assertions that we are going to be testing. So we're first going to look at the three sections okay, that we're going to be testing, and then we're going to look at all of the assertions, and then we're going to split those assertions into the three sections. So sections, then all the assertions, and then we're going to divide those assertions into the different sections that we might be testing. Okay, so let's talk about the sections that we might incur in the financial statements um, and the categories that we're going to be using. So management assertions are divided into three categories as they are related to the financial statement. The first one's called the transaction level. The transaction level would be like the debits and the credits. Okay, so uh, management's going to make assertions on the numbers. We might look at the transaction level, the actual level of the detail, and those are the things that we're going to be testing. Okay. So some would say, well, that's not actually on the financial statement. This, this is correct. The transaction level may not be on the financial statement per se. Uh, this may be the detail to the financial statement, but still important, right? If the number is based on the detail, then we need to look at the detail to make sure that the number is correct, okay? So that's why we have that one. Then the second one is the account balances. These are the actual financial statement balances that you would see on the financial statement uh, that a company issues. So then we're looking at those numbers. And then the last one is the presentation and disclosure. The presentation and disclosure has to do with the actual presentation of the financial statements as well as the disclosures that are included for users of the financial statements to have a better picture of what's going on. Okay, so management, these assertions can be divided into transaction level, account balances, and presentation disclosures. You can also say that when we are evaluating something on the financial statement, we can uh, categorize them based on these three sections, and then when we categorize those by these three sections, then we know what we're actually testing. So like if we're looking at the cash balance, the actual balance, then this is going to help us get to that. If we are looking at large transactions, for instance, for whatever reason, maybe we're looking for fraud or errors, then we're going to probably do something over here. We're going to look at these assertions, okay? Now, what are these assertions that I keep talking about? We've seen some of them in the last lesson. We're going to see uh, all of them in this lesson, and they are right here. Okay, so these are the assertions that we could be looking at when we're looking at a financial statement. Accuracy, obviously, we want to make sure that they're accurate, so we may test accuracy. Allocation, we're going to test allocation. Are they allocated the right way? Uh, we may need to task classification. How are they classified in the financial statement? Completeness, is it complete? Uh, cutoff, is it in the right period? existence is it actually exist do the assets exist or are they just on the on paper they exist obligations do we actually owe that money uh, occurrence did the transaction actually occur rights and obligations the company actually owns it understandability can the reader understand the financial statements valuation are things that are valued at a different value than book value are they valued correctly are things that are valued at book value are they valued at actual book value or were there changes made to it to make them look like they're worth more than they were purchased at okay so these are all the assertions so I mean I wouldn't do this but you could theoretically write all of those assertions down and then put it in the front of your textbook or if you are uh, learning auditing in the front of your book or front of your notes and so when you're saying okay what am I trying to do well which one of these assertions fits on what you're trying to audit Okay, now I'm going to step away for just a second so you can take a screenshot of the board. I know it's full, but we're now going to talk about the real meats and potatoes of now classifying these assertions into these three sections. And you may want to just screenshot it rather than write it all down, or maybe you want to screenshot it and then write it down later. So I'm going to step out for a sec so you can take a screenshot. If you don't know how to do a screenshot, look it up on Google or Yahoo or your favorite search engine. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take these assertions and put them in here, and then I'm gonna explain a little bit more about it. So let's start with the transaction level. So the, remember, the transaction level is the actual debits and credits. So how do we test 
the journal entry at the end of the day. How do we test that? Well, here are some of the assertions that management is looking is saying if they put a journal entry into their books, they are asserting these five things and we need to test those five things. Okay, first they're asserting that that actual transaction actually occurred. Did it actually happen and was it authorized? Okay, and that's a key one. So some people when they are explaining assertions, they may include over here authorization, but uh, authorization is included in occurrence. Uh, authorization is a subsection of occurrence, so I did not include that over here, but just know when we look at occurrence, did it actually happen and was it actually authorized by whoever needs to authorize it? So when we look at that transaction, management is, is asserting that it actually occurred. They're also asserting that it's complete. Did all the transactions uh, that should have been reported, are they reported? So are they all reported? Okay. Did they leave one out? Did they forget to do one? Okay. They're also asserting that it's accurate. So the journal entry is accurate. Now, accuracy means are they all recorded appropriately? So some people get confused with complete and accuracy. I do it all the time. Complete means is it complete? Is the journal entry complete? Is it there? Accuracy comes back and says, okay, it's there, but is it done appropriately for the right amount? So we're talking about dollars here. Is it appropriate? So we might need to look at an invoice from the vendor. We may have to go to the vendor and check the price out and against what the client put it on, okay? Cutoff, are they in the right period? So it is assumed that it's in the right period, but what happens is companies like to push things forward or push things back depending on how they have a impact on the financial statement. So did they put it in the right cutoff period? Is it should have been in the last period or should it be in this period? Okay. Um, and then they're asserting that the classification is correct. Transactions are in the right account. It's classified correctly. So when we look at a transaction, management assertion is asserting Occurrence, completeness, accuracy, cutoff, and classification. The question is, how do we test for these? And that's what we'll learn later on. But how do we test for these to make sure that the journal entry is actually correct? So that's the transaction level. That's the assertion for them. Let's move on to the second one. The second one's account balances. Remember, this has to do with the actual balance on the financial statement. Uh, four assertions here that management is asserting. They're asserting that it actually exists. Do they actually exist um, from a financial standpoint? Point. So if they say $2.6 million in cash, it actually exists, okay? They have the rights and obligations. They're asserting that they have rights and obligations to the assets um, that are actually owned and the liabilities are obligations to the company. So they didn't just put liabilities just to put liabilities, okay? And they didn't put assets just to put assets. They actually own the assets, okay? Now they may own the asset with a corresponding liability, that's okay. Uh, some would say that the bank owns it at that point, but they do own it. Uh, it's just that they have a liability attached to that asset. Completeness. Is it complete? All the assets, liabilities, and equity are recorded on the financial statement. And then when we look at the account balances, we're also checking to make sure, or they're asserting that the valuation and allocation are proper um, and that the they have a proper valuation amount and allocations are correct. That's very important for things that are measured at fair value that is not the stock market. Okay, So if it's measured at fair value, it was appropriately valued um, in the books. Or if we're talking about assets and depreciation, they're valued accurately as a depreciable asset in the financial statement. So that's the assertions for account balances. Now the last one is the presentation and disclosure. We've got, um, I mean we technically have four categories here but there's a lot of assertions in it. The first one is occurrence, rights, and obligations. And so what we're saying here is management is asserting that on the disclosure of the presentation that it actually occurred, they had the rights um, and there's an obligate or the obligations the liabilities. Okay, so th they disclosed the events, transactions, and other matters, and they actually occurred and is the, of the company. Okay, so those are assertions they're making about the disclosures in their financial statements. It's complete. All disclosures are included, so they're not missing any disclosures. Um, when we look at a financial statement, it is assumed it's implicit assertion that all the f disclosures that need to be in there are in there. They're not missing any. 
They're also asserting that the classification and understandability, that they're appropriate in presentation and clear. So they're not just making a bumble jumble mess, so to confuse you, and if they confuse you, then you won't ask any more questions. They're also asserting on their presentation disclosure that it is accurate and the valuations are done correctly, uh, disclosures are appropriate in amount and disclosed fairly. So these are the assertions management are making to presentation and disclosure. So I know there's a lot in this lesson, but at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is, are we testing at a transaction level, the account balances, or are we testing their presentation disclosures? Once we figure that out, then we need to go, okay, what is management asserting? If they're saying cash is $2.6 million, what are they asserting? Well, they're asserting that it actually exists, that they have the rights and obligation, that they're complete, and that they're properly valued and allocated in the financial statement. That's what they're asserting. So the question, now what we're gonna do as an auditor is we're actually going to test these assertions. What's test existence? How do we test existence? Well, if it's cash, we're gonna get some bank um, reconciliation and we're gonna do a bank confirmation. Rights and obligations, assets are actually owned. We're, we're going to look at the board minutes. We're going to look at any um, reports that we might see. We may try to go to back to the bank and make sure that it's not being used for another purpose. Okay, um, It's complete. We're going to try to do our best to make sure that the, all the assets are complete and all the liabilities are actual obligations, especially from their vendors. Valuation allocation, we may do some calculations or some um, data analytics to make sure that they're properly valued and allocated. Depreciable assets, we're gonna redo the depreciation schedule. We're not gonna take their depreciation schedule. We're gonna do ours, and then we're gonna compare ours to theirs. If it looks good, if ours looks like theirs, then it's appropriately um, prepared. So those are things that we're gonna do. I know we're not doing testing in this lesson, but I want you to understand what we're doing in the grand scheme of things. So in this lesson, I gave you all of the assertions that you're gonna to need to use. Then we broke them up into the three sections that you might be testing with uh, in your audit. And then we talked a lot about the different assertions and how they work within the three sections. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding about management assertions. What you need to know is that management assertions are correct, they're important, and that's what auditors use or rely on to make audit, to do audit procedures to make a fair opinion at the end of the audit. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you like what you saw, make sure you press the thumbs up button that's right below here. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave a comment or that question in the comment box below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you press the subscribe button. It's just below me. Hey, if you want more videos like this, make sure you go to www.patrickleemsa.com to see more videos like this or if you just want to learn more about accounting. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.